Hey everybody, it's Ripley again. Welcome back, start of a new semester. Hope you're fired up about it. I'm gonna give you some more integration techniques. So let's do some more integrating here, shall we? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you something here and it might give you a little bit of fit. So let me give you, let's say this integral right here. I'm gonna give you the integral of x squared sine of x dx, okay? Now let's look at this thing, just take a minute. So I'm gonna try and figure out what the indefinite integral of this is. Here's the problem. I can't use a u substitution because there's no part of the integrand that's a derivative of another part, right? I don't see a cosine laying around. I may, I may think to myself, wait, I can let u equal x squared and then du, oh god, du equals 2x dx, but this is an angle. This is inside of the sine. That's not going to work, all right? So I'm a little bit stuck as far as this is concerned. I, I don't really have a technique by which to do this given the, given the skills that I have thus far. Look, think about it. Up to this point, we have the ability to integrate the Fantastic 15. We have the integration to, or we have the ability to use integration by substitution. And other than that, we're kind of stuck at this point. Basically, all I'm doing in this chapter is, and I've said this before, I'm just adding tools to your toolbox. So I'm going to add a big fat tool to your to your toolbox here, and it's called integration by parts. Now, I'm going to show you how this works. First, I'm going to show you what it is, the, the what the formula is, and then I'm going to show you where it comes from, and then we're going to use it on this, okay? So check this out. Integration by parts is really easy. What it is, is it says, if we have the integral of u dv, in other words, if we can break the integrand up into a chunk that we're going to call u and a chunk that we're going to call dv, then this is going to equal u times v minus the integral of v du. Now, notice what we have here. We have a u, we have a du, we have a dv, and we have a v. So what that means is before we get started with actually using this formula, we're going to bust something up into a u and a dv, and then from the u, so we're going to start with a u, and we're going to start with a dv, and from the u, we're going to produce a du, and from the dv, we're going to produce a v. And you can probably see how this is done. This, we're going to take a derivative, this we're going to take an antiderivative. But before I use this, let's let's be real careful here. I want to show you where this comes from. It's actually really, really clever. If you remember, if I take the derivative of a product, remember back in the day when we were still doing differential calculus? Oh yeah, that's right, it hasn't gone away. Remember what this was? It was it was the derivative of the first times the second as it stands. So this is v times du, right? Plus the integral of what? U times dv, right? Now, if you look close, if I were to throw, if I were to algebraically subtract this over, do you agree that what I would get is u times dv equals, now look close, it's going to be the derivative of uv minus v times du, right? Now, if I integrate everything, let me change the color of my pen here. If I integrate everything, I can do that. I'm allowed to do that. Remember the laws of algebra say I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to everything on both sides. Well, look at what I get. I end up with the integral of u times dv is equal to the integral of the derivative of uv. Well, the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that that's got to be uv minus the integral of v du. Now, I realize that this is all theoretic. So to just bear with me. All theoretical, I can never remember which one, which way to say it. So let's go back to our original function here. I'm going to have x squared times the sine of x dx. Watch what happens here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a part of this thing and I'm going to let it be my u. And then I'm going to pick a part of it and I'm going to let it be my, my dv. So in this case, I'm going to let u equal x squared. And I'm going to let dv equal sine x. And I'll show you why in just a sec. Just bear with me. I'll do a little sidebar over here. Well, check it out. According to the formula, I need a du. So du is going to be 2x dx. Ooh, this dv should probably have a dx on it, right? And my v is going to be the antiderivative of sine x, which is negative cosine of x, right? Because the derivative of the cosine of x is negative sine. <clears throat> Excuse me. So according to the formula, what I end up with is, I'm going to bring an equal sign down here. I'm going to get uv, which is negative x squared cosine of x, minus the integral of v du, right? So I'm going to have negative cosine of x times 2x dx. Now I'm going to show you something here. 
I, th I think this will help you to understand kind of what to grab and when to grab it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to algebraically simplify this. Pull my constant out, or pull that negative out. So I end up with negative x squared cos x plus 2 times the integral of x cos x dx. Now, notice what happened. The degree of this polynomial, I'm still in a position where I don't really, I can't do a u substitution because it's not going to simplify my, simplify my problem at all, right? It's not going to simplify my problem. So I don't do a u substitution here. I'm going to have to do yet another integration by parts on this. However, look at your integrand. It got simpler. I went from x squared to x. So it's telling me that I'm moving in the right direction. And I promised you, I want you to look at what would happen if, say, I let u equal sine x and I let dv equal x squared. Well, think about this. If u is sine x, then I know that du is cosine of x. And I know that v equals x cubed thirds. I'm being a little cavalier with not including my dx's here, my dx's here, excuse me. So now look what happens. So I'm going to put this guy right here so we don't think it's equals. I will end up with uv, so x cubed thirds sine of x minus v du, the integral of that. So I end up with x cubed thirds cos x dx. Notice I am more complicated. I have made a harder problem than I had before. So that doesn't work. Okay, so we're not going to use this guy. Fair enough. However, now I'm going to violate a big mathematical rule here, but just for the, for the case of simplicity. Excuse me. I'm going to use u and dv again, even though mathematically speaking, I realize that if I use u here and I use u here, they better be the same thing. I'm going to cheat a little bit, otherwise it gets a little more complicated than we need. All right, I'm going to let u equal x, just like I let u equal x squared. Now, hopefully in your brain, you're starting to see here why I'm going to let it be x, because when I take its derivative, it's going to disappear, which is good. It's going to turn into 1. I know that dv is going to be cos x dx. I know that du is going to be dx, Ooh, thank God. And I know that v is going to be what? Well, what's the antiderivative of cos x? It's sine x. All right, now here's where we got to be real careful because i got a lot of stuff going on. So this implies, let's use an equal sign, all right? I'm going to have my negative x squared cosine of x plus 2 times, now, you ready? uv, which is x sine x, minus the integral of v du, and look at what happened. Oh, isn't that just lovely? Look at that. Now I can take the antiderivative. I got to be careful of this too here because it's going to distribute across the quantity, right? So the antiderivative of sine x is negative cos, so it's going to interact with that. So let's see what happens. Negative x squared cos x plus 2x sine x plus what? 2 cosine of x, right? Because the derivative of that is going to be negative 2 sine of x. Okay? You with me? And then, of course, plus c. Now, if you don't believe me, if you don't believe yourself, how can you check to see if an antiderivative is correct? Well, you know how. Take the derivative, and you better get the integrand back, right? Well, let's do that real quick. Take a minute. Pause it. I'll do, I'm going to change colors, and we'll do it over here. Take the derivative of this answer, this antiderivative, this supposed antiderivative, and see what you get. So pause your, your video for just a second and try to take the integral or excuse me, the derivative, and then I'll do it with you. Okay, hopefully you gave it a shot. So if I take the derivative, if I take the uh, dx of this guy, what's that going to equal? Well, nice and easy. The derivative of the first, I'm going to bust this thing up into two separates, is going to be negative 2x cos x, right, plus the derivative of the first times the second, plus the derivative of the second times the first, so plus negative x squared, that's just the, the it as it is, right, times negative sine x. Ooh, this is starting to look good. I got an x squared sine x right here and right here. Now we're going to go nice and easy. Plus 2 sine x plus, what is it, 2x cos x, and then minus 2 cos x, right? 
So let's see if we got, let's see, let's make sure I didn't screw anything up. 2x sine x, right? 2 sine x plus 2x cos x minus 2 cos x. So let's see, wait, something went horribly screwy here. Two, oh, wait, minus 2 sine x. Well, I'd have been bummed. Two, see, even I can make mistakes, although they are rare. Now, check it out. 2x cos x, negative 2x cos x plus 2 sine x minus 2 sine x. And look at what I end up with. Isn't this nice? Those negatives cancel, and I end up with x squared sine of x. Oh, Ripley rules, Ripley rules. All right, so that's pretty cool, huh? That's not so bad. Now, I'm going to show you an easier way to do that down the road, all right? But that's a really good one to start.